joined by Oriole's Vice President and Assistant General Manager in charge of analytics, Sig Meidel. Sig, thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here, Paul. So we looked a lot at the 2022 season. For Orioles fans, what an exciting year it was. From your perspective, looking analytically, how much did this team in 2022 meet or surpass your expectations? Yeah, for us too, what an exciting year it was. <laughs> And I know maybe it's a bit cliche, but uh, the expectations were really about changing and building a lot of the processes. And so with the analytics group, with the coaches we hired, that went quite well. And I know the win-loss record was much better than, than Vegas, so that <laughs> exceeded those expectations. But, but we're, we are really much more focused on the process. But that said, we, we couldn't help but enjoy it probably like you both did mm -hmm. too. Is your department now fully staffed finally? And can you take us through that process? Because obviously when you showed up, maybe there were like one, two people that were actually in the department. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know what fully staffed means. We'll <laughs> see what we end up. The world of baseball is hiring analysts and developers at a rate that they've never done before. So it's continuing to not only get bigger, but the rate at which it's getting bigger is also increasing. And so uh, we have six analysts right now, and we have six developers, and we have three or four very skilled interns. And so that's the group right now. We have an opening for an analyst and a developer, and when we fill that, those openings are likely going to still stay there. Um, when we got here, it was, a, it was a lot different. There were zero analysts and one developer, and thankfully that developer is, has stayed because he's quite skilled. Should we run a number at the bottom of the screen for anybody that wants to apply? <laughs> yeah, to yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's put a what, uh, URL down there. Right. Uh, so I'm sure that you have in your mind going into every season kind of expectations for where the team is going to be. Looking at this past year, how much do you think the Orioles were a product of a little bit of luck in terms of the win-loss record? And, and how repeatable do you think the success that they had in 2022 can be going forward? Yeah, I think all we could do is uh, do our best with the process. So we could hire the best coaches we could find, we could give them the tools, we could do our best to uh, find innovations and decision-making innovations and share that with the coaches. And the rest is some combination of chance, of luck, and of uh, these processes um, revealing themselves. So how much of that is, like, we don't really know till retrospectively, so we're extra looking forward to next year to see if indeed our bullpen continues like it did, if we see the improvement not only in our minor leaguers, but the major leaguers like we saw. And I think as a group, we're optimistic that a good chunk of that is more signal than noise. Is there an easy way for you to explain how your department operates? Yeah, I think we have persons with quantitative backgrounds. And so when an intelligent, experienced baseball person has a particular hypothesis that another experienced, intelligent person may, baseball person may disagree with. Instead of resorting to who has more status, who's been there longer, who might be related to the owner, that we have a better way of deciding who's right. And that simply is looking at data, looking at evidence, and then basing our decisions and our behavior on, on what we think is going to happen in real life and not necessarily on on the opinions of of this expert or that expert and so in a short description that's what an analytics department does this offseason is pivotal of course for the orioles and their front office have you noticed any difference in the way that the front office has operated this winter whether it's paying more attention to big league free agents or big league trade acquisition pieces as opposed to maybe some moves around the periphery it's a challenging task, I think. Like, we want to win next year, but we also want to win in the future. And that's what a responsible Orioles employee cares about. You know, the, the Orioles aren't going away at the end of 2023. And so Mike Elias, the front office, that's a constant battle. And I think we've, we've done it well. We have some experience with that in the past. And certainly with the with the uh, results from last year, with the expectations that come from that, that that's not lost on, on us, and certainly that, that changes the calculus in, in the work we do. Noah Denoyer ended up being quite a find. 
uh, undrafted free agent, now ends up on the 40-man roster. What role did your department have in kind of, I want to say, discovering him, but kind of bringing him to the attention of the organization, which led to scouting him, which led to him signing? Okay, so Denoyer, like any other amateur who's hoping to become a professional, like there's 30 teams all looking for the good players. So if we end up with a player before the other 29 other teams get him, it's a likelihood that some of the lenses that we look at, that the boxes were checked, that he was well-liked in that. And Denoyer is no, no different. He was in the Northwoods League doing well on a variety of, of metrics, and Michael Weiss, one of our analysts, pointed that out. But that's not where the story ends. We had a scout, Ryan Carlson, who was combing the Northwoods League, which you know, isn't the most fruitful of, of areas um, for some perhaps under-the-radar guys, and it was the combination of, of these two lenses both shining on on the same guy that that led us to get him and and then from that point it was up to him and the coaches to to develop like he's been showing he he can you mentioned keeping an eye on the future with all of your moves how much of your time is spent looking for the next frontier in analytics i remember a couple years ago we were talking about some of the new technology that was going to be incorporated in the game whether it was virtual reality things that could help players how much of your time is spent looking for that? And is there anything that you've discovered that could be uh, a breakthrough for the next frontier of analytics in baseball? Well, I could answer the second question first. Like, we wouldn't tell you if we knew. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Yankees may be listening in. Uh, but I think, uh, in general, like, a, a fair portion of our time is spent with this sort of paranoia, this insecurity, like, what is changing, what is going to change, and how can we assure that we don't, we don't miss it? So it's a fair amount of time. Uh, a lot of it is not fruitful work. There's a lot of false alarms. There's a lot of not ready for prime time technology and ideas that aren't being used for good reason. But I think back on, was it maybe 2006, 2007, um, when we were working for the Cardinals that TrackMan was new. And I was like, okay, let's, check out what this new technology is going to do and um, it didn't look a whole lot different than these other mad scientists ideas but now looking back on it it was a technology that would revolutionize baseball especially pitching yeah are you finding that more players now that come in the organization already have kind of a working knowledge of the analytics and have been exposed to this data as opposed to previously when it might have been from square one introducing them to all of it I think many, they may not have a working knowledge, but they have an interest and a willingness to accept it, unlike perhaps a decade before, where it was foreign, there was a whole lot of pushback, there were many fewer anecdotes of of success, of real major leaguers using this for their own benefit. But now when they come, uh, they're still talking to their college teammates who were drafted by other teams or or persons in their baseball circle that were drafted by other teams and they're sharing what the other teams are doing with them Mm -hmm. and how they're using technology and instead of this initial pushback like I don't need this foreign thing it's like well why are the Rays doing this and not us or look what the Yankees are doing and so uh, there's much less pushback and and there's at least a willingness and often a desire to to, to have everything from them. Sig Dell, the Orioles Vice President and Assistant General Manager in charge of analytics. Sig, thanks so much for taking the time. My pleasure, thanks for having me.